So when are we going to start the marriage counseling session? Because it comes up every time, it seems I don't know, like. So but can we just coming. get out of the just way Just stay tuned. Time? Yeah, we'll have some yeah, kind okay. of marital counseling for thing. all I'm, you listeners and I'm watchers out there. A surprise. <laughs> like the get hit by a bus sideways. <laughs> oh, the love is deep. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Abundant Life Show. I'm Charles Todd, your host, and the wonderful, the mysterious, the you never know what you're going to get, Angela <laughs> Todd. The peanut gallery yep. is in the house. Yep. Well, today we have a special guest. I am excited. It's so exciting. She's spot on, amazing. Her personality is just, she's one of my favorite people, favorite for what she's teaching because it can be taboo for some, but prosperity for others. Her name yep. is Christy Van with Fantastic Finances. She dives right on into velocity banking and what that means. And she really has a heart to save people from debt yep. and poverty and you name it. Yep. She's just digging that ditch and she's throwing in a lifesaver. Yep. So grab it because she has some really amazing information and we want to know about her life, what she's been doing, where she's coming from, how she's exploding on social media right now and how she has been called by God. Christy. Amen. Welcome. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. I am really a nobody from East Tennessee and I just, you know, I so came humble. Up yeah, no, I'm serious. <laughs> uh, you know, and I just had uh, something come into my life that really changed it financially. And my desire is just to get the word out there. So here we are. Well, so I want to start by just talking about kind of the foundation of your channel, which is Velocity Banking, mm -hmm. and how I was attracted to the show, to your channel of watching it, and how simplistic really that. It was, and I didn't really know anything about velocity banking, to be 100% honest with you, until after we had talked, and just so everybody knows, I actually contacted you, I signed up for a one-on-one -on -one counseling service, I went through your program of filling out the paperwork and everything, we had a consultation, which basically just ended up just, just, just shooting the breeze the whole time and just connecting on a right. lot of different ways, but I was thoroughly impressed on how your program basically is laid out first, because it is so easy to do, and you learn a lot about velocity banking. And then after I had the counseling session with you, then I started thinking, this is what my wealth manager has been talking to me about. And I actually started looking back at some of our spreadsheets and stuff, and it said velocity banking on the top, but I just never knew that that's what we were doing. So from a wealth management perspective, my guy was already taking me through that. I just didn't really know it. And so for the people that are out there listening, I don't want them to think that velocity banking is this thing that's for these wealthy investors and because really it can be used a couple different ways and correct me at any time that I'm wrong I'm gonna give you the chance to obviously explain it but I want to do it in layman's terms for people from who maybe don't have never heard anything about it is that it is a way to basically get out of debt or to speed up paying off a mortgage without and this is what's key about it without having more income because a lot of times i think people who are out there the teaching is like okay if you're gonna get out of debt you have to sacrifice and you have to budget and you have to you have to cut all this stuff and you need hot dogs every day for a month <laughs> and you need to go out and get 10 more jobs and you got to work 24 hours a day and you're never going to sleep and it's like that whole thing is like people are just like how do i do that you know and that's kind of the philosophy and obviously i'm being extremist on that but that's more or less the philosophy but with velocity banking you don't need extra income and you don't need to really cut anything now there are going to be circumstances obviously that some people are in hyper consumption they need to make some changes in that but the point that i'm trying to make is that the way velocity banking the way that you teach people is you don't have to do that it's a it's a basically getting things in control and then using an additional credit line to be able to change the way that you're being charged interest so that you can accelerate by putting all your income into the one credit line to accelerate paying off those debts. Did I do an okay job with? Explaining? You're doing great. Okay. And the problem is the American people don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know that we're being taught that, you know, a loan is the way that we buy our things. Yeah. You know, I was raised on that. Everybody has a mortgage. You make your payments and then you're never going to pay it off because you're going to end up moving or, you know, you're going to refinance it. So um, I think that that is what 
is just absolutely, um, I don't want to say demonistic, but I'm going to say demonistic <laughs> because <laughs> we're just not taught. You yeah. know, you don't realize that there are other options out there that's going to literally stop the payments. Yeah. And when people are aware that, wait, you mean I, I had this the whole time? You know, mm -hmm. it's just a tool. It's just a tool from the bank. And we're taught the loans instead of the lines. So the idea of my channel is to educate people that you have an option. You have yeah. an option to end this paycheck to paycheck filling today if you want to jump on it. You know, a lot of people are afraid. Yeah. So how did you find out about it? I actually um, am a CWI by trade, so I'm a certified welding inspector, and I've worked on BP refineries, and uh, I was actually going to a Facebook project because I was, uh, they were putting up data centers, so I was driving, it was three hours one way, and I would listen to YouTube, so I was literally just, you know, I had been praying about my own finances, and out of the blue, Matthew Pilmore, who's with the VIP Education, he actually just popped up and started talking about, you know, these payments disappearing on credit cards. And I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> so I literally pulled over to watch the video. And I thought, wow, as soon as I get home tonight, I'm going to get my stuff out and do that. And wow. it was just it's kind of growing from there because once you learn about a line and how it works, you look for more lines. Mm -hmm. So I've really just felt it out throughout the years and I've known I want to share it and I have shared it in my area, but it's like, they're so blinded. It's like, you can't really get people to see, you know, and, um, here we are on YouTube and it's like people are reacting and it makes me so happy. But that's how I found out was just a video. I had prayed about it and it just like it popped up out of nowhere. We talked about that once where you're when you're praying for something, you don't know how it's going to come. Right. But something will pop into your feed or someone will suggest something to you. Mm -hmm. But again, it's wisdom or it's knowledge. Knowledge came into you and then you prayed. I'm sure you prayed for wisdom and yes. to be able to teach it. Um, and so you got the anointing and then here you are, you're exploding <laughs> all over YouTube. It's crazy. That's amazing. It is amazing because I feel like it's the favor of the Lord yeah. and I don't know why he gave that to me to do this, but I don't feel like I'm on a special mission. I just feel like that people deserve to know, right. you know, and that's the mission. People yeah. deserve to know. People do. Yeah. And there's a lot of hurting people out there and people like myself that was a single parent. Uh, you come out of, you know, messy divorces and it's like, you know, I was just loaded with debt from that. And I took it to get out of the situation. And I'm like, you know, some people only sign if they know they're out free. So I was like, OK, I'm going to take this. But it was like it never occurred to me. Like you just said, you know, you have to work hard, you know, get extra jobs, you know, uh, save extra. You know, you can't have cable Eat TV because you've got to, you know, you got to pay off debt. Yeah. So when you realize, wait a minute, this option doesn't require any of that. It's just a game changer. Yeah. Wow. So tell us a little bit how you first applied velocity banking to your own personal life and how that changed you. And what was kind of the, the time frame of when you're very first starting off using it until you felt like you got to a place like, wow, this is like really special and where you said, I'm going to start helping other people with that. Okay. So mine was really fast because I was just in the wrong tools. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have credit. I mean, literally I was ruined from the marriage and when I left the marriage, I had two credit cards, small ones, but they were to the limit and I was just making those minimum payments. When I heard Matthew Pilmore say that, he was talking about credit cards. Um, I literally paid off both credit cards in the same day because I learned putting my income in for what I'm already using credit for, for example, to buy food a month. Mm -hmm. That's $1,000 at least, you know, depend on your family. Yeah. And then your electric bills, your phone bills, everything can be charged, gas in your car, the car insurance. Mm -hmm. So I thought, wait a minute. Uh, so he was saying, just take your expense money and put it into your credit card first, 
then turn around and use your credit card throughout the month. And I was like, that is just genius. So I literally paid off two credit cards that day because I was able just to put the income in I was going to spend anyway, which did nothing but, you know, help my credit score. So then I was able, within months, you know, to move into a $100,000 HELOC on my home. I mean, it's that fast, and people think they're stuck for years. Well, that's, I think that's the key is that with that lack of knowledge that you just, when you don't know, then you do the same thing over and over and over, and I think that's a common occurrence. One of the things that we used to teach when we were doing our finance classes is the snowball effect, which is basically, you say you have five credit cards, you pay off the smallest one, and then you roll that money into the next mm-hmm. one, which, you know, it, it works okay, but the velocity of banking, in my opinion, is much more effective and much quicker than doing something like that. So, um, and the, the thing that I think that what I've kind of seen with this is that a lot of times from the Christian perspective, they say, stay out of debt. Like the scripture, stay out of debt and no, owe no one but to love him. You know, and so sometimes I think we can get a little bit jaded, like debt's bad, credit's bad, whatever it is. And if you're doing it from a consumer perspective where you went out and buying another TV when you already got five TVs and you don't have the money to pay for that TV or another pair of shoes or whatever, that, yeah, you don't need to be doing that. But when you can use debt, when you can leverage it or when you can use it to actually accelerate getting out of debt, then I think that's a whole different story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the what's wrong behind the teaching of, you know, you need to cut up your credit cards. Yeah. Well, we live in a credit system. Yeah. This 1960s teaching of save like grandma and grandpa did, that's not working. Not today. We yeah. are in a credit society. They're even trying to take cash away as we speak. Mm-hmm. So people need to be focused on moving into the credit society with getting your credit ready for what's getting ready to happen. I feel like that that's kind of what Velocity Banking, the channel, fantastic, turned into, even though I wasn't intending it to go that way. The point is, is we need to get the society ready mm-hmm. for this credit system that they're pushing on us Uh, once your credit is there you can move into whatever you want to whether that be a new house you know i have people uh, ask me all the time well i'm already in a mortgage Mm -hmm. we'll transfer it into a first lien heloc yeah i mean it's that simple yeah you just have to have your credit prepared to make those big moves like that and that's the that's the thing i want to touch on is with the credit so you can't buy a house you can't buy a car you can't, if you're talking about financing, kind of the bigger things in life, if you don't have any credit. And so the message of staying out of debt, well, if you stay out of debt, then you don't have any credit. Right. You can't yeah. have a line of credit to then go into bigger things or leverage Well, and what we've talked about, too, credit. is in the past, I mean, because we came from a place of complete bankruptcy 25 years ago, having no cars, no place to live, no bank accounts, no anything. So we had to rebuild that. So as we rebuilt our credit, and then we got to a place where we're completely out of debt, and then we started to then get mortgages and do some other things, investments and that type of stuff. What I noticed was that we, when we did something that I thought was good from a credit perspective, like paying off a loan, actually lowered our credit. Right. <laughs> you know? right. yeah. I was like, so the, the credit system actually works against a guy who's being diligent and paying yes. his bills and yes. paying them off. What they want you to do is they want you to have them open. So if you listen to people who are experts at building credit or whatever, they say, well, leave those credit cards open, Mm -hmm. you know, because then it's going to extend that. And even if you're paying them off, like we pay all of our credit cards off at the end of the month, everything, they're like, don't close those things, even though if you're not using them. So there's, there's things to learn about how to utilize your credit that sometimes doesn't even make sense Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the credit perspective. So I like what you're sharing, you know, as far as, you know, even if you're in a place where maybe your credit's bad, by just utilizing some basic principles of velocity banking, you can start to establish that credit and get exactly. to the places where you need to get. Because that's what people, I think they say, well, my credit just sucks. <laughs> you know, what yeah. do I do, right. you know? Right. Well, there's hope, just like you said, just put your paycheck into the credit card or pay that off and then continue to put it in there. And then how quickly they'll start to raise your credit, your uh, it, your limit yes. yeah. or whatever, and then how quickly your credit score starts right? just by using the system. Right. So you can use the system against itself the same way like what, how we use credit cards is from the point systems for right. traveling stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're, that credit cards, they don't want a customer like us who racks up all this, you know, 
tens of thousands of dollars a month and then pays it all off. Right. Because they're getting nothing out of it except for the merchant fees that they're charging to the merchants. They're making money off of that, but they're not making any interest off us. And then we're taking the points. Yeah, and, and if you're using cash rewards, right, yeah. you're making money off of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a beautiful system. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Well, and that's being, using credit wisely. Right. You yeah. know. And that's my that's my whole point right. with that. Is go ahead. Yeah, no. So we wrote you know, one of our children's books is say no to debt. Mm -hmm. And what that means is say no to hyperconsumption. Yeah. Right. Because in the world, you will have the loan shark looking to lure you into yes. hyperconsumption so that you are in a place of despair or you can't figure out what you're doing. And I think a lot of people come that way to you. They're so leveraged. Yeah. I mean, do you advise them to, okay, well, like you were just saying, you have five TVs, you only need one. Mm hmm um, first they have to probably assess their inventory and how they are spending money because they can only work with what's coming in. Right. 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 So how do you keep them on a budget? I don't believe in budgets. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I say that respectfully, but it's that if I feel like that I am being told I can't do something, that makes me want to do it more. Yeah. So it's my the law. I, yeah. <laughs> so my idea when I speak to people, you know, they send a worksheet to me and I can look at that and I can tell, okay, we've got a spender here. Uh, the only thing I say, because I'm not going to make a judgment call. I don't know what got you in the ditch you're in. And, you know, if you have 25 credit cards and they're all to the limit, you didn't necessarily do that because you're a spender. You might have had a business still go bad. You might have had to have lived on your credit cards for a while because you lost your job. I mean, so I never look in a at someone and try to make a judgment call on, you know, you're ridiculous. What I do is when I see a lot, a lot of living expenses that could be avoided, you know, like if they've got five or six different uh, subscriptions they're paying to social media for some reason, you know, I might be like, you might want to cut back on that a little bit until you get your debt balances mm -hmm. down a little bit. But the thing is, is that um, like you mentioned, the credit cards, paying them off. If, if you have five credit cards, and let's say they've got two or $3,000 each, and you turn around, let's say that they have $200 payments each. Well, I mean, you're talking $1,000 a month just in credit card payments. Yeah. But if you take one line of credit, let's say you get a $15,000 personal line, and you pay those five off with that, yeah. what happened to your payments? They went away. They went away. So now it's cash flow. Like this. Yeah. You know, it's right. gone. <laughs> now it's cash flow. Yeah. Now you're putting all of your income into that one line. All yeah. of it is paying down. That's why people are out of debt, you know, in a year now instead yeah. of, you know, 10 years or 25 years if you just make the minimum payments. <laughs> well, so, and explain that, too. So when you've got your line, I you're, you, you, were, you had talked about this before, is the daily balance... Mm -hmm, the and, average and then the average balance so explain that a little bit okay so the average daily balance is what the bank will take that interest rate times to figure out what you're going to pay in interest charges that month so like if i have fifteen thousand dollars for the average throughout the month then whatever that percent is they're going to take it times that that's going to be your interest charge okay, okay? so if that's fine. I have no problem with interest charges because if we're buying things, we ought to have to pay a little bit because we are leveraging the bank's money. I'm not against banks. I'm just trying to teach people the right tools to use. Right. And so if you have a $200 a month charge, interest charge on that card, and you are putting your income of $5,000 into it, See, that's where it knocks the interest charge back so far. So if I have a $10,000 balance on a card and I have $5,000 that I can put on that card being the total expenses I would spend anyway, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be spending it anyway, so let's put it into the card first, that's going to knock that balance back to $5,000. Even for one day, mm -hmm. that's going to decrease your interest charges. Right. Okay. So the point is, is hitting that line as often as possible. And for anyone listening, if you're trying to build your credit score, the best way, and I do this every day and I get feedback, 
every day of how people's scores are increasing up to 90 points by the mm -hmm. next reporting wow, date. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. Just because you can take a minimum like $10, $20 a day and put into a credit card. And that, for some reason, makes them so happy, and they will boost your score. A day? A day. Yeah. So, like, instead of taking $1,000 that you're going to put in in the month, uh -huh. if you divide that up, like you go to the grocery store today, you spend $100, you put $100 in tomorrow, that revolving that account, they love that. Oh, wow. And that will boost the score That'll very score. quickly. Very interesting. Any uh, advice on the different credit systems you know there's like Experian there's I don't know there's three or four does Engineer, it matter I don't I don't give advice I make suggestions <laughs> <laughs> I am not a financial <laughs> advisor um, so I tell people I make suggestions you make decisions um, because the suggestions will get you out of debt and so when you're talking about Experian or Credit Karma or all of those different avenues I use them but I use them just to see what my scores are looking like right. but as far as them being able to help you they was just there to report yeah what's there. just kind of yeah. a monitor of what's going on let you know what's going on right so just kind of in summary so a typical person's going to pay their bills they're going to write checks they might have like ACH set up with their account to whatever it is the utilities or whatever the the point is or the general principle behind velocity banking is just stopping doing it that way and now using a credit card or a credit source of some type to now pay those mm -hmm. and then putting the income into that credit card so like you're saying so I'm just trying to just do a general summary so people really understand this easily if you have that ten thousand dollar credit line and you make 5000 and let's say you even have a $10,000 balance, once you slide all that income in, now it just went down to $5,000. And so then you now have that $5,000 to pay each one of these bills or these in, these right. expenses that you have over here. They're going to come out of that. And each time you get paid, you're just putting that back in. So you're just kind of going back and forth. Right. right. Exactly. So, and I think one of the things, and we just went through this with our daughter had just had somebody write a fake check. They, they made a check with their name on it and wrote it to themselves like and put in the memo approved like and then had her banking routing number and account number on the bottom and then deposit the check and the money came out of her account. So one of the things that you know I said was, I've always told her to do is be very careful of who you're sharing that account information mm -hmm. with because in once, once you, if somebody tags your bank account like that, it's not like a credit card typically where you can just dispute it and they credit your account, usually you have to start an investigation. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that can be lengthy, sometimes be very quickly in getting your money back. But the point I wanna make with that is if you have somebody that's living paycheck to paycheck and that entire amount gets yes. stuck, how do you pay your bills? And yes. how much stress does that put under you? So if you can avoid using a debit card online mm -hmm. to protect yourself or ACH, whatever, and you use a credit card, you're way more protected from yeah, any type exactly. of, of fraud basically too so it's not just from the benefit from the velocity banking but also protecting yourself and especially these days with much fraud is going on right. it's like you got to really you know watch what you're doing right i only um, use checks for one thing and that's to pay my tithe right. and i just i use credit for everything else yeah yeah i think we use a credit card to pay our tithe so we get points we do. We do. We have a, <laughs> well, I got this particular credit card, it's a personal credit card, because it gives five times points to charitable donations. Really? Yeah. I need to know about that. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah we had a hot tip that will help yeah. you. <laughs> but that's a good thing. I mean, you know, selecting, while well, we're talking about credit, selecting the credit cards that are going to benefit you too on how your spending is, mm -hmm. because there's the same thing. You know, business cards are typically have better point systems than personal credit cards. Right. And what some people don't know is that you don't actually have to have a business and have an EIN number to get a business card. You can use your social security number mm -hmm. to get a business card and use your own name. So you can still get the benefits. So especially if you're looking at like American Express cards or Chase Inc. Uh, preferred, I think there are some of the best point cards out there, in my opinion, what you can get mm -hmm. is that if you get a personal card, you get like 100000 for the first three months with the amount that you spend. If you do a business card, you can get anywhere from one hundred fifty to 200000 Wow. So the benefits are those are great. So I'm sharing that because there's a lot of other benefits besides just using your credit cards for your Velocity Banking, too, that are then going to end up saving you money because then you're going to get be able to use those points for trips or whatever it may yeah, be Yeah, well for too. travel, especially right. if you travel. So, Right. So it's just a matter of using things from a different perspective than what we've been taught. It was like, we just whip the credit card out sometimes because 
I don't got enough money to pay for it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to use this. Like, oh, Jesus, please help me pay this bill. <laughs> the month. Like, I really need these new pair of shoes, you yeah. know. So it's changing that mindset and getting away from that. And that's what I love about what you're doing is that when I'm now talking to people about velocity banking, it's like I'm surprised how many people uh, I never heard of it before. And so Yeah, just we had an interview <clears throat> earlier today and – Never heard of it before. Right. I, I was like, never I heard never of heard of it before either. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's wisdom from the Lord. And I cannot tell you how many times in a day I get emails, um, you know, comments on YouTube, Facebook. They'll say, I was praying about this last night and your channel popped up every day. Right. And that has to be the Lord spreading the message. And that makes me happy because when I started the, the YouTube channel, it was really just to reach people I was always already working with. And that way I didn't have to repeat myself over and over right. with the same information. <laughs> just go watch YouTube number one. Yeah. It'll explain everything. <laughs> and when it turned into an explosion of uh, the world, I was like, wow, I was not even expecting that. Right. But people are so tired. They're exhausted. Mm -hmm from this life of paying bills, and I don't blame them, been there, done that, and it's like, if I can, I want to push it as far as it'll go, because even if something were to happen that Fantastic were to be shut down or whatever, the fact is, is as many people as I can reach as quickly as possible are going to get this information, and then you have a choice. Are you going to use it or not? But if you choose to use it, it's amazing. I mean, it's a real game changer for your finances. So does every bank have this option, a line of credit? They do in some form. Most, uh, most have all forms. So I do get that a lot. When my bank doesn't offer a PLOC, well, you know, go to another bank. They're not loyal to us, so let's go find one that works for us. Right. Okay. So that just takes a little bit of mm -hmm. due diligence calling around, going online. Uh, one of a great resources, NerdWallet. You can go to NerdWallet. We love NerdWallet. It will have everything, bank accounts, credit cards, comparison side by side, what's gonna work. It will give you links to whatever. Nice. Uh, Different yeah, apps. It's a really great resource. I didn't know that. Yeah, also like uh, mortgage calculators, car loan calculators, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. So you, know, you can really know what you're dealing with before you step into the dealer. And right. they need a Velocity banking link. Yeah, it was really. Right to you for education. <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to say about that, people are having their wealth stolen, and but it's just because we don't understand what the loans are doing, and when we're talking about a mortgage, especially, is that not the American dream? Which really means death. More uh, mortgage is. The root word is, is, is death. death. It's a death pledge. It's a death yeah. pledge. Mor right. Mortgage, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when I learned that uh, 13 years ago, I was like, wow. Right. Wow, they knew what they were doing when they set it up. And, you know, they used to have prepayment penalties. So They did. Yeah. And on even some of the, I know you have, uh, in the past, have done some things where you call and say, hey, this needs to go to the principal. It does not go to the interest. And you actually have to call them every single month and tell them how they need to put the money in. Yeah. And you yes. have to be on top of that because if not, they're going to do what is going to benefit the bank. Because right. so, and some banks online, like for car loans, wherever they may be, they give you the option to put mm -hmm. in the principal or even if they send you a bill, you can do that. What I've found is that banks these days completely take that away from you. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that. So like we're, we were doing something, we were paying off a car quick or something I was trying to do that and I had to physically call in to do it so they just made it difficult to me yeah you know? it's like is that premeditated I don't know I yeah, think well, so probably so it's benefiting <laughs> yeah and you That's can take I take a lot especially right now with the, the interest rates being ridiculous uh, you know it is a normal thing today for someone to have a six percent interest rate on their mortgage and you're like, oh, my goodness. And that's nothing that's, for where it's going. Uh, wow. <laughs> what is and it right now? Eight, nine? Yeah, I think it is. 8.25 I worked on one last week. And I was like, you have got to get out of this. So I think that we don't get it. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they'll have $2,700 a month payments. And $2,690 will be going towards the interest. And, you know, if you could just hear people, because they'll say, yeah, I know, it's just the way it is. 
that's not. It's that's, not it the doesn't way it have is, yeah. to be that way. Right. You know, a ten thousand dollar chunk. I did this over. I do this all week. But a ten thousand dollar chunk last week on a person that had, I think it was a seven point five two or something interest rate. One one ten thousand dollar chunk onto that principal with a line of credit, not using their own money, using a line. Literally saved them ninety one thousand dollars in five years on their home loan. It's amazing. One and that ten thousand dollars does not cost them a thing no. with the way they were using their income into it. So very very simple simple tricks. Yeah. Right. Well, one thing I learned from you too, we're talking about we're talking about mortgages, is that you said, well. What is your mortgage rate? You say if it's 4%, times it by two and add a zero. So if your mortgage rate is 4%, times it by two is eight, add a zero. So you're actually paying 80%. Absolutely. So if, you're, if your interest rate is 5%, you're actually paying back 100%. So right. not only buying yourself a house, you're buying the bank a house too. How you're generous. buying the bank. <laughs> you're, you're buying the bank a house. First. Quite a good guy. Yeah, you're exactly buying their house first. Because the interest comes mostly on the front end yes. of the thing. So then and, you I don't think people pay. get that. When you think about... Four percent, you might not think two pattern five percent. That's not that bad. But when you right. think a hundred percent, then you're like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> it's like yes. people don't think about that. No, you know? no. And you know they'll say, well, you're you're crazy. You're crazy. You know, <laughs> you know. It's just simple interest, and uh, which I don't mind that. I don't mind it at all. People just are respectfully ignorant you yeah. know they don't understand right. what they're doing but that you know they'll say what how are you getting that how are you times and that times two and all i have <laughs> to say is go pull your mortgage yeah, documents it. it tells yeah. you on there what you're actually and you know what it's so funny because look at the wanna, amortization schedule yeah but you, you know? want to <laughs> laugh out loud i do because they're so smart whoever set this stuff up is like wow you know i wouldn't <laughs> want to be you because i don't you know i'm sure the lord doesn't look good on this but it's like they are taking a a four percent rate and you know they sell you that mortgage okay this is a four percent and you're like oh okay well that's better than eight but when you get your your actual closing cost documents it says this four percent is not your actual interest rate right. they you tell you in capital letters <laughs> And you sign the paper anyway, but right yeah. under it, the next line, they'll say, this is what you're actually paying in interest over the life of the loan. And you're like, and then they say, oh, well, that's the life of the loan. That's 30 years. They right. front load it to the first seven years. Yeah. So most of that is in the first seven years. That's why nobody, 1% of Americans actually pay for their mortgage. Wow. Well, you brought up something that um, just when we were talking here before, and I want to bring this up, and you actually shared this with me. This was something you shared with me when we had our personal com conversation was about the first lien HELOC. Mm -hmm. So explain that a little bit, because that was news to me that I had never known, but it's basically you're able to pay a 30-year mortgage off somewhere between five to seven years. Once again, doing nothing different with your finances, the amount of money you're making or the amount of money that you're trying to save. It's just a different product. And once again, moving your income into that product or that credit line in order to do that. Right. Yes. So uh, you can move an existing mortgage into a line of credit or you can purchase a home with a first mm -hmm. lien. So the first lien is a simple interest product, mm -hmm. meaning that if it's 7.75%, which is the fixed rate currently, um, it's going to be 7.75% times that average daily balance. Right. Which is like a credit card. It's right. how a credit card done. It's not like how a home loan is done. So just explain real quickly the difference between that average daily balance and how like an amortization loan is. Well, the average daily balance is whatever you're actually averaging throughout that month, mm -hmm. you're going to pay the 7.75%, yeah. okay? Okay. Yeah. But with the, say it was 7.75% on a mortgage, God forbid, <laughs> that is front loaded. Yeah. So that's why most of that payment is going towards the interest. And with the, the line, you're just paying the percent actually on the average daily balance of that month, not over the whole 30 yeah. years. And that's why the, the term fixed right. is right. fixed. It's right. not changing daily like it is on the right. credit card is. So, Well, now with the... I have variable because it works. 
Mm -hmm. Your income goes in. It's taking care of that. And, you know, we if you want to get real serious with your strategy, which is what I try to do with the people I work with, we can get that 7.75 down to one or two percent. I mean, it just depends on how you're putting your money in there, how much you're putting it in, how much how much you're leaving in there throughout the month. You know, just different things. So. I breathe. I tell people, I said, breathe. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be all right. <laughs> Just take a deep she's breath. Make sure of it. Well, you had talked about, you know, people calling you crazy. Yeah. So I do want to talk about the haters because they're <laughs> out there trying to do a good thing. You've got haters coming against you. Uh, I know it's tough because you're trying to break a uh, poverty mentality. And I know when you do that, you have a lot of opposition. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be from family, from friends, from church, from Christians, especially. All right. Um, I had, I did a post on Christian women and rich pastors and having money, and I got oh. the most hate comments ever. <laughs> no doubt. And I thought, what is happening in the world? <laughs> you know, I was broke. I'm now rich. I'll never be broke another day in my life. Right. But that's my choice. Mm-hmm. You know, if broke works for some people, like you said, the, and you counsel people one on one, and I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of layers of, okay, you got to break that one wall down. You got to break the next wall down. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I will tell you that it is all about your giving. So um, back at the very beginning, When I was talking to the Lord about my finances, I came across Kenneth Copeland was talking about finances Mm -hmm. and he was saying, the more you give, the more you receive, which I'd always heard that in my life. But I was like, what? Because the way he was bringing it with all of this scripture, I was like, but we're supposed to be poor. That keeps us humble. You know, that keeps (laughs) us that keeps us wanting to go to heaven when we're down here and we're living in a shack. You know, we want that mansion. So I think that that was amazing, and you know, the way he brought that across. So, of course, I got his study material, and I was studying, you know, what that meant. And I said to a friend of mine one day that I was sharing this scripture I'd been reading, and I said, everything that we give comes back multiplied. So why are we worried about giving our paycheck to the ministry or to the kingdom? And they were like, are you going to start giving your paycheck? And I said, I am absolutely going to work my way up to that. So I I have, you know, Satan comes against you. And immediately when you talk about giving or, you know, I want to give to this or you have a thought of giving, you know, this thought comes to you. Well, you need money to do this. You don't need to do that. I still get that every day. Right. But there is nothing that is going to convince me, especially with what I've seen over the last few years, that your giving is not where all of this comes from. Your giving determines how much you get back. So I talk to people that are in a spiritual mode because the ones that aren't, they don't understand that and they're not going to. But I'm so loud and proud about if you'll increase your giving and you focus on trusting the Lord that he's going to do what he said he would do, Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to receive more. You know, we're kind of like distribution centers. We get and we give. And the more we get, the more we give. Well, I mean, hello. (laughs) I absolutely love that. I love it. We just had a guest on who said that his wife at the time was actually tracking. He was helping somebody out. And the more he helped this person out, the more he prospered in his business. Yeah. And he said he didn't even realize it, but his wife was like, do you realize the more that you help this person? Like she this kept good a list. Thing? Like she kept the <laughs> list. That's crazy. <laughs> and so now he's like, I'm trying not to get legalistic about it because I'm thinking now, who am I going to help now? Because right. now I'm going to increase. But mm-hmm. it's a, pr- it's a spiritual work, law. A spiritual law. Yeah. Well, you, you said something you were talking about thinking that poverty makes you humble. Mm-hmm. So I have a scripture that I'm going to share. I know it by heart, but I'm going to read it just to make sure everybody knows that I'm reading it. It's from the NLT, and it's Proverbs 22 and 4. It says, true humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, Mm -hmm. honor, and long life. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about the fear of the Lord there is actually worship. It's actually worship, so it's not about like being scared. Mm -hmm. But it says true humility, because what religion has done, now poverty is not in the Bible. Poverty is in religion. Right. But what 
the poverty spirit has done is basically it is false humility. So you could flip the scripture around. That false humility leads to poverty and mm -hmm. not a long life and not honor any of that type of stuff is what it's going to be. So you can be completely broke and all you're thinking about is money, money, right. money, money, money. Right. Or I'm so broke, I'm so humble, I'm so worthy because I don't have anything. It's like I, 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 it's the spirit of I. True humility is getting your attention off yourself and putting it on Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when you're not focusing on yourself and you're focusing on him, that's humility. Right. And you're saying that everything that I have has come from him. Mm -hmm. That's humility. Everything you're giving praise, that all your blessings, all your finances, all your relationships, everything has come from him. And it's basically through the salvation of the cross is why we have that. Right. That's humility. Right. And when you get the attention off yourself and you put on him, that's to me is how you trust that's Philippians 419, that you know, God will supply all your needs according to his riches of glory in, in Christ Jesus. I'm not relying on myself. I'm not relying on velocity banking. I'm not relying on our business. I'm not relying on anything. I'm relying on him. Right. That is true humility. And when you can get your attention off yourself, that's when your faith can activate everything, all the promises in, that are in God. And another scripture I'm thinking of right now is Proverbs 10 and 22, is that um, riches... Um, let me think of it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to right. it. Right. And I just heard this lady. I was having breakfast at the hotel today, and she was an attorney. And she, the ladies, two ladies are sitting next to me. And she says, I don't do business down here in this area. I do business up here because the people down here are very wealthy. And because they're wealthy, they have all kinds of problems. And so I was thinking, if you're wanting to grow your business and you're an attorney, wouldn't you want to be around where all the problems were? <laughs> But really what she's saying is she didn't want to deal with that. She wanted to be up here. So then my question is, you know, how is that like kind of tied to somewhat of a tired a poverty spirit? And that makes me think about the song, Mo Money, Mo Problems. <laughs> That's how the world thinks, right? right? You know, right. it's like, hey, I won the lottery. It's like Cousin John, who I never even knew from Mississippi, is like knocking on me. Hey, remember me? Cousin John's like, I don't remember you. Cousin John's like, ah, yeah, you do. Let me have some of that. You know, <laughs> that's the problems that right. the world thinks about. But God says, you're not going to have those problems. Right. You're, well, not, you're not going to have to deal with those things. And from, is there going to be some trials or whatever that may come? Well, yeah, there's going to be stuff. But in the majority, it's like, we're not going to have those same issues that the world's going to have when they come across money from the wrong way. Well, and, you know, going back to the hater list, mm -hmm. my first unction, like you were just talking about giving, was how much are the, if I were to look at their spreadsheet, how much are they actually giving? Mm -hmm. If you're coming against someone else's prosperity, that just means you're so broke, you can't even give out of what you got coming in. Right, no faith. Yeah, no faith mm -hmm. and no giving. I would say first, if you got a problem with somebody else, check your own giving output. <laughs> I get tickled because if I listen to a TV minister, they talk about the Jets. You know, that's a big discussion. Well, the, the preacher owns a jet. Mm -hmm. And oh, right, I jet. swear, I, I went on my first private jet, and I will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, when you know what a private jet costs, to just have someone fly you, you know, two hours away, right. or you have a, a a commercial flight, and you know what that cost. These people that are flying everywhere every day, yeah. they the the cost for the jet is nowhere what they're putting in on actually taking care of getting someone to fly them everywhere, and you know having to wait for somebody to come. So I, my perspective on the private jet thing has completely changed in the last couple of weeks because um, the expense that goes into flying. My goodness. I mean, I would buy a private jet. Well, I'm not going to fly in it, but I would buy it to move people around. <laughs> but, you know, right. it's just it's just the mentality of because I wasn't even aware of the cost of flying like that. And especially in a private jet. Right. Why? Yeah. I mean, Donald Trump, I think, has three. And I understand why, because he's somewhere every day. Right. And you need it's a that's tool, something you it's need. It's a resource. Right. You know, people, tool, not a luxury. Right. I yeah. mean, people don't come against Walmart for having right. jets and houses and real estate and all that stuff, yet they are giving that institution money every single day. They right. are sowing into that. Right. And that is not a spiritual law that's going to actually produce or reap fruit. So right. 
the scripture of, you know, give, it shall be given. So the laws of God are multiplication. Mm -hmm. If I sow into the kingdom, I'm going to multiply something that's back to me. If you sow into the world, you're depleted. Mm -hmm. If you sow into the kingdom, it's going to multiply back to you, which a lot of people just don't read the Bible or they have no knowledge of. Or those with the poverty mentality think, you know, if I'm... Oh, the preacher wants my money. You know, they're just trying right. to steal my exactly. money. They're just trying to get my money. Well, it's between you and God. Once that money leaves your hand and you know you're sowing into the gospel moving forward, that is when your blessing can come. That's when your faith can activate. And that's when increase in financial prosperity, I think. Right. We were, we were having that conversation this morning about um, as far as 70% of prayer requests in the church are for either healing or finances. Mm-hmm. So that means... That's a big three three quarters of the problems of the church is money and health. Mm-hmm. So, if somebody is coming to you and asking, "Hey, will you pray for my finances?" and then the other statistic is less than eight percent. The last time I saw st- stat, less than eight percent of Christians tithe. Oh yeah. So let's just say let's just cut it in half. Let's say thirty five percent of people have money problems coming for prayer, but yet less only a very small percentage are even giving anything. Mm-hmm. So my point is is that you can identify the problem right there. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't like what you have coming in, check what you have going right. out. You know, we don't even have to do a spreadsheet. <laughs> we don't have exactly. to send it in to Christy to see what's going on here. Right. But people don't like that. No. You know? And so we get back to, um, you know, the first Timothy says that the love of money is the root of all right. evil. And I always like to say that make sure that you get the love on there because people misinterpret that and say that money is the root of all evil. They try to make money look evil, and it's not. Right. It's the love of money. And what is that love? It means it's the wrong relationship. So like we were talking about before about humility, false humility, true humility, like having the right relationship with money is like getting your attention off of the money and seeing, like you said, not being like this dead sea where all the money is coming in. I'm actually a stream right. in the river where it is flowing through exactly. and being a distribution center, like you said. Well, I mean, so, um, was there a poor person in the old testament that followed god they were filthy rich filthy rich you will have so many argue against that (laughs) (laughs) well i'm sorry it says abraham was filthy rich (laughs) he was he was absolutely and then then when cattle right silver and gold right he he said i'm going to bless you to be a blessing right in 12 genesis 12 and 2 right what do you say I'm going to give this to you so that you can give it to someone right. else. Bless you. One chapter later, 13 and 2, and said, and Abraham became very rich in cattle, yes. silver, and gold. Just so people wouldn't say it was, spiritual. he became spiritual rich. This is the material <laughs> oh, I know. stuff. Don't you hate right. that? Wow. Okay, it's yeah. gold, baby. Yeah. So let's talk about when Jesus was talking to the rich young ruler. Yeah. And he told him, you know, uh, he'd ask him, what did he need to do to inherit the kingdom? Yeah. Well, you know, you need to, you know, don't commit adultery and all that stuff. Yeah. And he said, well, I've done that. And he yeah. said, well, you need to give your, sell your stuff and give it to the poor. And he walked away sorrowfully. But I told my husband just this past week, I said, they will stop right there. Every preacher I have heard bring that out, especially in my area, they will stop right there. Well, see, he was rich, and he didn't want to give his money away. So, no, no, Jesus went on to say, you know, to the disciples that were with him, he literally goes on, because they say, well, if if he can't get in, then who well, can? Who can, yeah. right. So, obviously, they had money. Money, Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. And it's like, uh, then Jesus says, everything you give to the kingdom think, is going to come back to you. they say that they were astonished or something like that? Yeah, the disciples like, were astonished. <gasps> we're all going to hell. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it's like Jesus was teaching right there. Uh, you're going to get back 30, 60, 90, yeah. I believe it said. Uh-huh. On this right here in right. the present time yeah, and in, in the world yeah. to come. Yeah, right. right, not just in heaven. Nobody will... They stop right where the oh yeah he well because away. it fits the mold of poverty in the church you know and again it goes back to religion religion teaches well, people you got to be broke but those preachers are trying to go out and solicit money that think that they should be that the church should remain in poverty mm-hmm. there's a lot of that also that's going on that's hypocrisy but what I was gonna point out for what you just said about the rich young rulers. He came to him from a legalistic perspective, the mm-hmm. rich young ruler was. He's like, you know, I have kept all these. Right. You know? So what did Jesus do? He said, okay, these guy's coming against me. He's coming to me with the law. So I'm going to give him the law back. Mm-hmm. So because 
what did Christ come to redeem us from? From the law, right. basically, right? To redeem us from that, Galatians 3 and 7, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. So what he said was, is that we'll get rid of your stuff. So he said, I can't do that. So what was he doing? He was breaking the first law. When he said he'd kept all laws, mm-hmm. that have no other gods before you. So he had made his money more important than God. So right. that's somebody that's just going back to what we were talking about earlier, only 8% of the, of the people money. not being able to give because of the love of the money, the wrong relationship with money. So he didn't trust in the God as being his source enough to be able to give it up, knowing that he was going to get a multiplier. Right. I mean, I, I think that he probably been a great replacement from Judah. He knew money. Right. He was rich. Exactly. You know, what better guy to have for your treasure than a rich dude <laughs> that knew how to handle money? Right. You know, he missed a golden opportunity to become one of the disciples, I think, even. Right. Yeah. So, and that's because the wrong relationship in his mind with money. But it's put there. It's another way we're trained. And that's that's from the religion. Right. That's so. scary. Scary stuff. Well, when you think about, you mentioned too about, was there anybody broke in the Old Testament? Think about Jewish people. They have the Torah. Oh, yeah. Right? The Torah is what? The first five books of the mm-hmm. Bible. So they know that very, very well. That's why they're rich. Right. Very. You know? <laughs> I've told my husband that this week because we were in a Jewish community, I guess, down south here. And it was like, I was everything was just so big and rich and when i heard it was a jewish community i was like (laughs) well that makes sense right (laughs) you know they just follow the spiritual laws yeah and they have no no qualms about it right you know especially and if you're going to the jewish temple they support because they give they operate in that spiritual law you know they it's just like uh melchizedek tithing to melchizedek Mm -hmm. right no lineage was a representation of Christ, right. and Adam. he just, that tithe increased him like crazy. Another thing that I've run into with the church is that, you know, people will make a judgment call because they're like, well, I don't want to help them because, you know, they're probably going to go buy a drink with it. <laughs> they're probably going to, you know, and I'd put that out of my mind too because if I feel the urge or the push to give, I take out what they're going to do with it. Yeah, it's I not take up out. To you. This is about right. my heart, not yeah. theirs. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that people need to get their mind off of, you know. Well, I don't give to them because they're probably going to do this with it. And I'm like, well, it's not about them. It's about you. Yeah. You're right. supposed to give. Or they're rich. You know. Yeah. I'm not going to give them money right. because they're already they already have money. And it's not about that. Right. It's sowing into what's going to benefit you. So I think in my mind, if I see someone super wealthy, I want to, or if I'm led, I'm usually led to that person and how do I help them in some way? Mm -hmm. Because not everyone that's super successful is living a rich, full life of prosperity. I mean, you can have lots of money, but you could be poor in your health or whatever. I mean, maybe that person needs uh, just a word of healing, Mm -hmm. you know, or maybe they need whatever. I mean, there's so many needs i think that i think you're right and i think that when people talk about faith they they kind of put it in a salvation you know you have faith that you're saved Mm -hmm. but faith is when you're using the word you can take the scripture and grow your faith in that so do you need faith for finances then read more in the scripture and that will build your faith you know do you need faith for healing then study the healing scriptures so i was glad you brought that up because i didn't understand that i thought it was our faith is so that we're you know saved you know because that is basically where it's applied and yes we need it for that as well but every area of your life can be affected by putting your faith with scripture and you're saying it out loud. I tell people to write down your goals, say mm-hmm. them out loud yeah, because them. it feeds your spirit when you're saying yeah. these things out. Um, and I don't, I never was taught that either. So I try to, you know, educate maybe is the word to where people are thinking outside of the box instead mm-hmm. of, Oh, well I've prayed, you know, and, and the Lord's going to you know, give them. But how about you go ahead and say that? Right. It's already because Jesus said that once when you're in prayer, you're to thank him for what you've received as yeah. if you've already received, received it. it because yeah. it's coming. Right. You know, uh, I, there are just so many verses that I don't feel are used enough every day that if we were throwing them out of our mouths, even myself, 
you know, I'm constantly watching. What is it? You know, what what's is coming out of your mouth? What's missing in my <laughs> yeah. life, and why is it missing? Is it because right. I'm not applying the principles, you know, and saying it that it's coming? So there was just a lot of. I mean, we could sit here and talk all day <laughs> about. <laughs> we are all a work in progress. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I yes. like to say, see the end. Right, it is finished. Yeah. So if you believe that you have received it when you prayed it, right. then see it happening. Right. So use your imagination to see the end and then watch it connect. So if someone is seeing themselves out of debt and doing the things that prove that you are out of debt, if that's even blessing someone else. I mean, mm-hmm. in our own ministry, we had to believe that a certain amount of money was there for us to go and to be able to give it to somebody. Mm-hmm. So if you have a giving heart, you can believe for an amount of money. Right. To be there and then see yourself blessing that person and that money will come right. because God will give seed to the sower and you will be able to operate in that. So see the end, see yourself out of debt. And this is it. Maybe you already have saw yourself out of debt and then boom, all of a sudden Christy Van pops up. Well, that's that's your that's your key. Now you need to act on it. Right. You know, yeah. because faith without works is dead. So right. that faith will bring in that opportunity for you to apply it to then to receive your zero percent and your loan payment. that is that's so true (laughs) that's so true and i'll tell people you know that are in a situation that we can't get you out of right now because you have a horrible credit score you have no money you're you know a thousand two thousand dollars in a negative cash flow i tell them i can't fix it but i can put your name in my prayer board and I can pray for you. And I have yet to have one that doesn't come back and say, this happened. I love it. And I you mean, can see that for somebody else. Oh, and that's yeah. the power of salvation and the body of Christ is being able to, if someone can't see it for themselves, mm-hmm. you can see it for them and it will come to pass. And it does. I mean, Amen. you know, ask, knock. I mean, see? all of that. He gave us these things. Right. And I don't feel like the people are just taught, you know, we just could use this and change our lives. Uh, mine uh, on my board was I want to be able to give at least 5000 a month away. And I, it, realistically, at that time, I remember thinking, this is so stupid. But I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm it's going un- to get my life to where I'm able to give. You know, that was just my number for some reason. But I've exceeded that. And I'm so right. happy, you know, because but giving. you saw it. You wrote it down. Uh, you were believing for it. And so. it gives you joy. You know, it gives you joy because you know that you've actually um, accomplished a goal. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to do more. So one of the things I'm just going to wrap this up for us here that you said at the very beginning that I wanted to touch on was that you're providing knowledge for people is the word that you used. So it reminded me of Hosea 4 and 6 says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But a lot of times people stop there. They don't go to the rest of that, which says or also rejecting it. So there's two parts there. So you're providing knowledge, but people are going to have to make a choice Mm -hmm. in order to receive that. That knowledge is there and you're there to help them. The other part that we've been talking about, why I brought up the rejecting knowledge, is that you share with people about, hey, God wants to bless you. You know, God wants you to be rich. It said Jesus became poor, so we became rich, that you have all the blessings of Abraham, that debt is a curse. People say, yeah, but what they're doing right there is they're rejecting that knowledge. And so that can be, you know, basically an acceptance of the curse. So what I love about everything that you're doing is that you're providing not only the knowledge, but also the tools and the assistance to help people get out of something that's very clear in Deuteronomy 28. And if you go verses 1 through 12, is all the blessings. And what's interesting to me is that the curses are then 16 through 68. There's a lot more curses Mm -hmm. on there, but you're saving them from one of those curses, which is debt. So thank you. And I just want to, you know, just commend you on what an awesome job that you're doing out there for the people. Um, I know that it's not easy. And we just want to encourage you and support you in any way that we can to continue to do that. And if you want to tell the people on, we'll put your links and everything. We'll just tell them where you, they can find you at. Okay. Um, I have a website, fantasticfinances.com. That's with two N's. That's my last name. <laughs> so I thought, wow, this is just fantastic. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so uh, fantasticfinances.com is my website. I have services and stuff there. I keep my services to a minimum because anyone can do this. I have the videos on YouTube under Fantastic Channel. Uh, You could go there and watch everything. You don't have to pay me a dime. I don't want your dimes. I want you to get out of debt. Awesome. Yeah. 
Well, and then you can go to Todd underscore worldwide, or you can go Money Mike and the Gang. You can go to the Amazon and get the books. Money is easy. We got Saving all kinds easy. of giving tools for help We're you. Just talking help, about help giving. Help parents, help get out of debt. Say no to no debt, excuse. hyperconsumption, and go to Christy Van's website and learn how to apply this to change your life. Thank you, Christy, Thank you. so much for yeah. the time Welcome. and making the Thank effort. Thank you for we having really me. We really appreciate you being here and, like I said, everything that you're doing for the world. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate the what you all are doing. Wake you. up, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, that's how Thank we you. end it. We just go like this. Peace. Peace. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>